I am very interested in contemporary practices where the artists are guided by a will and an urge to examine certain phenomena. And I thought it was interesting for this exhibition uh, to bring together three artists, Pierre Renica, Jean Schneider, and Malik Gognon, uh, who work in different ways with different topics and have a different uh, various um, visual, in terms of visual style, it's quite different what they're doing. But I felt that what they share is this urge to examine something and um, a curiosity. I wanted to build a film where a storyboard was built into the film. Um, and also I wanted to, to make a comparison between the idea of a storyboard and the idea of an urban plan uh, and how an urban plan functions. So, the, so I wanted to in investigate these kind of urban I ideologies that uh, have been written in the 20th century and what kind of effect they have on sort of everyday life, how we understand them, how they affect us, affect us on a very practical level. I mean, the streets and the houses, but also the language behind it and how uh, these urban ideologies or urban ideas they really had, uh, they had, they had a thinking where they wanted to kind of script people, script people's life, how people behaved, how they walked, how they slept, and you know, how they made love, or all these kind of things. They were scripted into it. So for me, this uh, kind of urban ideologies also became called of kind of urban fictions. Any, any citizen choose any form of production, distribution, self-improvement, enjoyment, within a radius of, say, 10 to 40 minutes of his own home. All now available to him by means of private car or helicopter, plane, or other form of mass public conveyance. So I, I staged an actor to, in the film to read out these um, statements from Le Corbusier and Constant. So two different urban ideologies, urban ideas. Uh, and I also wanted to hear like, how it would sound when it comes out of the mouth, rather than just when it is written word. And what does it do to this character, which I call the urban subject? That he's this uh, character who walks through the city, who's trying to understand these ideas, who's also uh, uh, kind of a marionette doll. You know, he's, at the same time, he also becomes a kind of, a, of an author who's telling us how to move in the city, how to live in the city. So that's what I wanted to do, to, that's the reason why I staged this actor uh, in the film. The curious, photojournalists, and looters meet on the scene after an event, scavenging the waste and leftovers, looking for material for later consumption. Uh, his major can say, concern in his work is really not so much a comment on the political situation in Iraq right now, it is about the image and rep representation and the relationship between the image you see or even images we consume uh, through the news and magazines and then that's a reality it's supposed to represent uh, that should be behind that um, and in that context the site is really interesting because um, he had taken quotes from different um, newspapers and, and magazines all describing it's all reports from the moment when Saddam Hussein was uh, captured. So it's all quotes describing the place. For some reason, journalists were really interested in quite meticulously describing what it looked like 
what, what kind of food was in the kitchen, all different things. And um, Sean has then taken different quotes and sort of highlighted bits he thought was uh, especially interesting and um, compared them with images or photos that he has purchased through um, official uh, news agencies. And what he found out was that very early that not only the text themselves are quite different, but also the images are really different from the text and the images are really different from each other. Um, there are different sections um, addressing different places. One is uh, basically the way the place is described where he was captured. Some talk about it as a hole in the ground. Um, some images claim to be off the house, but they're really different. And the question is, when you look at them, is that the same house? I mean, there, there can only be one house that is where he was living. It's very different if he's living in a hole in the ground or if he's living in a little uh, primitive shed. Um, another project is uh, untitled Iraq. And that's actually amateur photographs. They're just smaller snapshots uh, taken by soldiers or contractors working in Iraq. And they're very different from the kind of photographs um, a photojournalist would take. Um, they're often more private. It's just what people were interested in. So it might, you don't really see any fighting. It's, you don't really see the violence. You see a lot of weapon, but sometimes you just see a funny dog or you see an amazing lamp. Or it's all, sometimes it's a beautiful sunset. And these, um, um, these are all taken with digital cameras and nowadays like, they're getting more cheap and it's quite common. I'm sure if you're um, a soldier in some foreign country you want to bring your camera and take your own photographs. Additional tactics have been adapted by soldiers. Consumer digital electronics trace their movements. In the near future photojournalists may no longer be necessary. Participants, bystanders and spectators wired for recording events will pass on images to agencies for editing purposes. An iconic image would be considered redundant or a forgery. Uh, so the process is really simple. You have a board of 150 buttons <coughs> corresponding with one light. It's a switch on and switch off button. It's really a simple process. And so the audience have just to produce a sign, but I asked to them, and there is a notebook at the bottom of, uh, of the board there, the common things, <laughs> where you, it's asked to you to reproduce by, num by numerical interpretation the signs that you are produced by light on the boards. I mean, on each button, there is a number, in fact. So at the end, the audience have to, to, to write by hand on this notebook, all the numbers that they use to produce a sign that, that we can read at this moment. So for me, at this moment, the audience is processing as on the reverse way as the computing is processing. That the co yeah, so we are making a transposition through, no through numbers, uh, that it's becoming a retranscription of the, of the later that we use, of the sign that we were producing. So for me, it's a kind of prehistorical computing system. And this process makes me possible to take at the end of the show, I can take this book and I can reproduce all the time that we are producing during all the, the, the exhibition time. And I make a photo of each thing that we are producing. I see it as a seismograph, in fact. It's something that takes the vibration from the place where it's exhibited. Uh, the local people are just producing what they want to express. In Japan, it was really poetic production. And in Biennale in Moscow, it was totally a kind of slang word of expressionism. It was more, a kind of, all the world was really fighting ones. It was really strange. So anyway, just to say that this piece is just taking the temperature of the place. It's interesting that all three artists work with a notion of storytelling, but also a notion of reality. Uh, and it's quite, it's not that there's no distinction between them, but you never really know where you are in the two levels. If you look at Milik, uh, Milik's video projection, you have um, an image which is really the reality. You see a projector that physically was there in front of his camera. Uh, 
but it's also talking about a film or representing a film that is running there that is a fiction. So, you know, that's two different uh, layers. Um, Pia, in her new, newest video, which is um, The Zone, or Zonen, um, she brings these three art uh, architects into the landscape. They're real, they did what, you know, they are architects. They talk about uh, urban development and architecture. Um, so the situation there is, in that film, there's, sort of, um, there's an element of nonsense in terms of them talking about something that's so far away from the physical ground. You know, they're standing at grass, they're walking in the field. That's not what they're talking about. They're talking about urban development, which is not what you see. So, but so, so she's again putting, in a way, you can say their language, the way they think and talk into another situation, which is happening there. And that sort of art thing happening between what you see, what's happening, and what, what you hear um, is really happening. But of course, she's also telling a story. And again, because she, in, she uses some way of, of dealing with the image that she's learned, you can say, or even taken from cinema, that's again this, of course, she's also telling a story. So there's this le level of information and storytelling next to each other. And I think there's one interesting way you can think about information and storytelling, where information is something that is supposed to be the truth. You know, you give me some information, and if I can check if it's, you know, information is always right or wrong. While storytelling is giving, you know, it's about you wanting to listen. It's, it's something else. It's about you engaging in the story, and in a way, you have to make sense of that. 